Hey there, I'm Jamie Oliver, and I'm going to show you how to make my expression of beef bourguignon. It's the most delicious, dark, deep, gorgeous stew, perfect for this time of year. And I love serving it with mashed potatoes, greens. It's an amazing recipe that will put a massive smile on your face. So let's get going. So first up, we're going to start by marinating the meat. Now, I've got three pound here of beef cheeks. Now, this is not particularly classic. You can use any kind of stew in beef that you love and you can get from your supermarket for sure. If you can hunt this out, go to a butcher's, go to a specialist supermarket, is it worth it? Yes. Uh, if not, you can use regular stewing beef, no worries at all. So I try and cut them kind of chunky, about two inches each way. Don't stress about it. As I cut into it, you can kind of see the layers of meat and the sinew. So sinew is always thought of as a negative thing, and it certainly is if you're trying to do a steak, right? If you're doing a slow cooked dish, then it's a gift, and it just slowly melts away, giving you unbelievable textures. Beef cheeks, chunked up. So look, just to go over this, it's about three pound of our meat, four carrots, four celery, four cloves of garlic, and one big fat onion. Just cut it up chunky. Now, the next stage, the important stage, it's really important, is marinating. It does a couple of things. First of all, it breaks down the proteins. It breaks down the, the kind of connective tissues. So it makes things more tender. It also helps in par flavor. But ultimately, it's about making it tastier. If you marinate too long, that's when sometimes meat gets a bit woolly. So you can make it almost too tender. So we're going to do this for like 15 hours. So you do it the night before. So whenever I do this kind of dish, I like to do a big pan. So in a bowl, we'll go in with the beef. We'll go in with the onions and the garlic and the carrots and the celery. These are standard, pretty boring ingredients that are always around, so this is good. I do like to get a good pinch of black pepper in there. We don't put salt in because it draws the moisture out of the, the meat and I don't really want to do that. Bay leaves are a pretty cool herb. You can use fresh or dried, I prefer the fresh. And then the red wine. Beef bourguignon, uh, it's a nice burgundy wine. Beautiful color. So what I will do is put a pinch of that clove in now, and just like that much. And that with lots of black pepper is just really, really, really special. Is it worth it? Yes. Try and make it all submerged under the wine like that everything's now going to kind of flavor each other, even the veggies, okay? And um, I have in here got one that I did yesterday. I want to show you what's happened. So look, this is the meat that I just did, right? What happens now is that. Look at that. It, it, you can see it's already changed. The wine has got kind of khaki, so that's because it's kind of pulled, you know, excess moisture out of, there's a kind of pulling and pushing of, of the moisture. So let's drain this marinated meat. This is really, really good. So at this stage in the game, we're gonna let that just drain. We'll keep the juice. We're not gonna waste that wine. I'll turn this pan on uh, and get that kind of hot. I'm gonna use a sort of standard, I don't know, sort of like either a highly filtered um, olive oil, not an extra virgin olive oil, uh, or just an oil that I can kind of get a bit of temperature on. Just put a little thin layer in the pan, we're going to fry off this meat, um, seal it. We're going to put that into some regular flour and just coat it. So we'll try not to overcrowd the pan, otherwise it will start to boil. So leave a little gap in between. The flour will help us get some colour on the beef. It's also, later on down the line, going to help thicken the sauce. So it's kind of a really important part of the story. Food can be like therapy. That idea of kind of slow cooking instead of fast cooking, enjoying doing it. I mean, if I'm really feeling hippie, you know, think nice thoughts. People say if you think good thoughts, it tastes better. It could be true, you never know. So look, you can see me getting color on here. Once you've done the meat, you can take out any little burnt bits, no worries at all, but we're not gonna stop there because all of this veggies here, this is going in as well. So look, you can see just in like five or 10 minutes, like we've softened these veggies 
and we've got most of that sticky. See the sticky bits on the bottom, the little black bits? That, that's the flavor, that's not burnt, that's flavor. So we can scrape that off. Once you've got a little bit of color here, then what I'm gonna do is add some mustard, just a couple of teaspoons, and stir in the red wine that we marinated this meat in and pour this meat back in. Pour enough water just to cover the meat. We'll bring that up to a simmer. And then what I like to do is make a little parchment lid. Now why? If I put a straightforward lid on that, that's fine, but it keeps it almost too hydrated, okay? Uh, the steam at the top drips back down again and it kind of keeps it wet. I want this to slowly concentrate and get thicker and thicker. Scrunch this up and just run it under the water. It just softens up the paper and it means that we can almost just let it sit on the stew and create like a fairly nice seal, but it's still gonna breathe, okay? So this is now gonna go in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for around four hours. Now I say around because when it's tender, it's cooked. So have a little check, depending on the beef cheeks or the cut of beef that you're using. It could be three and a half hours, it could be four and a half hours, but when it breaks up in your hand, when you kind of just put a bit of pressure on, that's when it's done. So, you know, fairly classically, they would do like a nice little garnish with mushrooms and little lardons of bacon and tiny little onions. We've got the ultimate reflection of, of autumn, right? Winter, you know, mushrooms. So the best way for me to cook these and represent these is get a pan on a fairly hot heat, um, do nice little lardons of bacon, and we'll get that in the pan, get that fat coming out, and what we'll do is then do some shallot. Now you can use those gorgeous little silver skinned onions if you can find them. They will take ages to peel. I love it, but that's kind of for me, that's for the chefs and kitchens and like real people haven't got time to peel 30 little onions. I mean, I'd rather just, uh, just start my idea of hell. So with the mushrooms, I'm just gonna take a few over here. Chestnuts, buttons. It's got some funky little oyster, oyster mushrooms here. We'll just slice those up, okay? Nice and simple like that. If they're small, it's quite nice to give them a little quarter. These are a bit bigger. But with the other mushrooms, I think it's really nice to reflect their sort of personality. So try and keep their shape and their character. You know, to cook with them, I think has always been a joyful thing. My first job in London when I was 18 was with Gennaro Contaldo, who's one of the best mushroom experts um, in the country, but also Antonio Carluccio, who was his boss. A uh, very famous Italian cook. And the whole mushroom that I worked in was devoted to mushrooms. There used to be a lot of customers that would come to this restaurant and every dish had mushrooms. We used to get the truffles in from Alba. Yeah, we used to buy about four grand's worth of white truffles and that was like 25 years ago. Gennaro used to weigh the white truffles because, and check the invoice, because it was such a lot of money. One day when he was weighing the mushrooms, there was a bag of um, uh, Jersey Royal potatoes that came in and they looked just the same, so I swapped them. And um, he thought that the guy from Italy had mugged him off and he got on the phone and gave him so much abuse and said terrible things. It got very um, the godfather uh, and then he turned around and saw that it was me. And um, that was interesting. But I like to keep him on his toes. So we'll just cook that now. So it's really beautiful. And then we're done. The smell is absolutely amazing. You can see this is all cooked down. Look at that, our little paper top. Wow. And then, so the test is, is it tender? So the little finger, that is the test, look, just. That is the beef cheek genius, just falling apart. That, look, 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 look. With the mushrooms at the last minute, get yourself some parsley, and I will use the stalks as well. So very finely sliced, very finely sliced the stalks, but they're quite sweet and delicious. And then when you get onto the leaves, kind of go a bit chunkier, like that, and that'll be really nice and irony and beautiful. 
So look, mushrooms done. Oh, it smells amazing. Just little splurges of that in and around the pan. So that is our beautiful beef bourguignon. Then I've got some mashed potato. There's another little tweak to go with this, um, greens. So there you go, lovely people. That is my expression of beef bourguignon. Let's have a look at the meat. Look at, look, oh my lord. <laughs> Come on, that is tenderness. All right, let's get amongst it. Mmm. Oh wow. That's just like memories, memories. So good. If you want to have a go at my expression of this beef bourguignon, then go to 288 in my new book, Together. It's out in the shops now. Uh, click the link below if you want the recipe and a link to the book. But until next time, happy cooking, look after yourself, have fun, get together, cook something wonderful, and laugh a lot. Laugh a lot and enjoy some good food. Take care, lots of love. <laughs>